Hi everyone, and thanks for tuning in for what is now part 5 of my Gumpler practical series. Last time around I was talking about um, how I go about building my kits uh, before painting and the reasons for doing so. And I did say last time around that I would basically show you the best way to disassemble these kits. So, um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then uh, please have a look at the previous parts and uh, the links will be in the description or you can have a look at my website right there, gundamodelkits.co.uk to see everything neatly organised in one place. Alright, so um, just to do a very quick recap, I mean, I build my kits um, so I can see how they look, play around with them and you know work out the best pose, work out how much I can cheat and by that I mean how much I can get away with uh, you know sort of assembling sub-assemblies to paint all in one go uh, so basically it's just to make things quicker and easier for me when it comes to the airbrushing side of things um, now what's not easy is once you've got these things built um, if you were to build it uh, they're not in the normal way and how Bandai would have you do it then uh, they're pretty damn hard to pull apart basically so I'm gonna show you in this video just some very quick and easy tips on how to uh, make your life easier when you come to take these uh, bad boys apart. And really, they're very some simple. Uh, there's some very simple ideas, but if you don't know about them, then uh, you know you don't know about them. So, all right. One of the first things I want to show is things like this. Um, right there is my Kshatriya, and. What you see here is, uh, I've just done this to show you guys, but here, you see that? The, um, you know, normally it's, uh, it's all, with these high grade kits you get quite a nice, lot of uh, nice colour separation. So here you've got a case of uh, a white part which then has a yellow part that literally just drops inside it. And you can see normally with Bandai kits, uh, you know, we all know there's normally a peg and a hole system and or a slot and it kind of just pushes in. but every now and again they have something like this where it's just plain and this part this yellow part here is literally just held on by friction so what does that mean it means that it's a right bugger to get this out so this piece here once you've put it in you know whether you've painted it well especially if you've been painting these parts individually once you put them in you're not really going to be able to get that out again unless you damage the part so um, and in this case, of course, uh, we're just building it uh, snap fit as is, just plastic, uh, just for testing and posing and all those reasons I've already given you in the last video. And uh, we want to obviously take this back out again for painting. So uh, in this case, what you would do, um, because this white part is separate right here, what you would do is, and I'm not going to show you, uh, you know, in this video, but you know, take my word for it. Uh, basically, you drill a tiny hole in here uh, through the white part, and then that would mean that next time around, when you assemble, uh, disassemble this white part here, clean off, you would just, uh, you know, grab it and you just push it through from the back uh, because you've already made the hole, and that would, of course, pop this yellow piece right out. So that's what I'd be doing to here, here, and here like I've done with this one already. All right, and you can do that with quite, you know, that's a little trick that, you know, you can apply to quite a few parts and it really, really helps with, uh, you know, all the small parts normally. So another thing uh, on the same lines uh, is, and I don't know why this Kshatriya has both of these things, it's quite rare to see it like this uh, in one kit, but uh, this part here, this white part is also really seriously recessed into the shoulder area and uh, it's almost impossible because there's no grip or anything and this part's tapered there's no grip really to, to be able to pull this thing back out so for example here you can see I haven't put it in and you can see there there's quite a deep recess where this also, this white part sits and it'd be uh, it's almost impossible to get it out normally so in this case, and I'll show you this. Um, I'll show you this using another part. But what I'd do here is, I'd basically just trim the um, the pegs on this so that they fit into these two holes a little bit easier. And um, well, to be honest, um, in this case, I've only just pushed this in to uh, to show you guys uh, what, so I can talk about it and you can see a before and after. But Really, if I was doing this part, then this would be one of the things that I actually leave out. So I wouldn't even assemble this 
uh, normally so I just leave it out so I can paint it uh, you know as its own separate entity and then push it into here as the final step so sometimes um, with these things unless you absolutely have to uh, put these in then uh, you know it's best leaving them out uh, uh, well uh, before you paint it really so that's enough about that but what about those are some special uh, you know circumstances I would say so what about 90 odd percent of the rest of the kit uh, uh, and by that I am talking about things like this so I'll just show you what I normally do so here you've got let me just show you here you've got a shield and obviously this part goes onto there and as we all know and love with Bandai then there's the old peg and hole system you know you get the two together push them in and they hold together so um, so how can you make it easier to take these parts off and disassemble them again once you've made them because uh, you can see here there's not a lot to grip onto once you push this in so what I do with these kits is I well let me just show you two methods um, first of all I should really explain the tools so the easiest thing I find for me is a pair of nail clippers for method one which is basically you trim the pegs which are these things here uh, at an angle uh, so let me see if I can do this for you uh, whilst looking into the camera and believe me the easiest thing I've found so far to use is a pair of nail clippers as you see here so literally uh, this is a bit difficult for me because I can't see what I'm doing but I'll give it a go nonetheless so right there you see I've trimmed the uh, peg at a angle and that's really all there is to it so if you can imagine um, the difference now is that the peg's still there and it's almost as long as it was sorry let me just get this um, but what you do is if you do this with all the pegs what you're effectively doing is causing less friction when this pushes in to the corresponding hole on the opposite part so excuse me um, so you can see with these pegs obviously bandai molding quality is such that these will fit in here perfectly and with no give whatsoever so all you're doing really is you're removing one side of the peg so that you've basically got a point to push into these holes and if you can imagine once it's inside it's only touching on the one side the side that you've cut away is no longer pushing on the opposite side so what that means is that it still holds in perfectly fine if you do this to all the pegs but you'll be able to lift it out a certain way much easier because uh, you know one side effectively isn't pushing against the other side of the uh, of the hole so that's method one and uh, to be honest um, that's the way I was shown when I was um, you know sort of researching and asking people how to build kits all those years ago so and that works pretty well so you just go around you know clip 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 and that's all there is to it um, now another way I've found an easier way I've found um, is to actually do the opposite thing which is uh, to not trim the uh, pegs it's to actually widen the holes so what do I mean by that um, basically what you can do is I'll show you uh, a few methods but you can just use a plain crosshead screwdriver and really you just turn it a few times like this and you'll see that basically what you've done is you've widened the entrance well the top of the hole uh, from that to that and you can obviously do a bit more if you want to you know as, as when you please and what it basically does is it tapers the entrance of the receiving part so there's an angle now and that means that without trimming the pegs then the hole is already bigger slightly bigger than it needs to be on the first contact but then it gets tighter as it goes in obviously so um, I find that just by widening the hole like this um, works better for me because um, well it's just quicker because I'm a little bit lazy so um, it does help um, as a basic tool to have a screwdriver like this again it must be cross remember um, 
where it has an end here which allows you to spin it around because what you can do then is you can hold the end like this and spin uh, sorry let me get this in shot and spin the screwdriver with one hand now you might not have a particularly big one like that but you know most people will have something like this so I'm sure you've all seen things like this so you know same principle you just have this one you hold like that and you spin around this way so same thing now the reason why I'm showing you the second method is um, okay maybe that way it doesn't seem much easier um, but for me, um, being quite lazy, I have this, and uh, this is what I use when I'm making my kits. So, um, this has multiple purposes, and there's all kinds of heads. Um, it's basically a Dremel clone, and uh, I particularly like this one um, because it is a handheld, as you can see, just battery powered, and it's very low powered, so it means that you know, if you get a Dremel on um, you know, maximum 30,000 RPM, you're just going to destroy your kit. So this is a very cheap but basically uh, a better tool for the job because um, it's less powerful so with this because I'm lazy I just have that and it does literally the same thing like that and that's all there is to it so that's why uh, I prefer doing it this way so if you have a tool like this then by all means do what I do and you'll save yourself a lot of time um, by the way, uh, as this series progresses, then I'm going to be talking about all my tools that I use, and I'll go into a lot more detail with things like this for sure. So, uh, it's got many uses, so I'll definitely be uh, making a longer than video on that. Alright, and um, sorry, I forgot to show you. Um, back to my point about um, these um, parts that you might want to put in last. And there's certain things you can't really avoid, so um, if you don't want to put it in, um, last after you've painted it, for example these parts here on the shield you can see here one side, just for demo purposes I've pushed it all the way in and you can see there is, it, it's all tapered and there's barely, I'm talking about this part by the way um, you can see it's going to be quite difficult to get out and the old drilling technique doesn't work as I showed you on the Kshatriya because if you drilled into a hole here so you can push this part through then you, of course you're damaging the part that you can actually see so you wouldn't want to drill a hole in this case so really um, a little another little trick I mean it's not even a trick but you know if you if you're not aware of it then you probably don't do it so all I do is um, if you really need to assemble it and sort of give people an idea how it looks then just something like this you can just to get away with pushing it in you know 80% of the way through so there's a tiny little gap which means you know it holds on fine it's not going to come off does the job but of course you've got a little gap there so you can take it straight off when it comes to disassembly so um, that's it really um, I know it's a long video on what is essentially something very simple but if you're not aware of it then you know I'm sure that you'll find that uh, this will help you because once you've put it all together using these methods then you know it all looks the same but it means that when you want to take things apart, um, if you want to take things apart, um, it will be uh, so much easier for you. So, there you go. This video is getting on for a little bit now, so I'm going to carry this on the next part, and I'm just going to literally finish it off by talking about the tools and uh, actually an expanded set of tools that I'd use um, for helping uh, me and you both uh, sort of disassembling the rest of the kit. So. Thanks very much for watching this video, um, like if you like this video, and please subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you guys again very shortly, so thank you very much.